breaking news. The Big Ten is getting bigger and it's going out west. USC and UCLA are planning to leave the Pac-12 for the Big Ten, according to our Matt Norlander. Both teams in Los Angeles, the closest school in the Big Ten to Los Angeles, Nebraska. That is how far away <laughs> those two teams are from the rest of the Big Ten. Now, we've had seismic shifts all over the world of collegiate athletics over the last couple of years. It really all started with Texas and Oklahoma announcing that they were going to join the SEC. Then the Big 12 countered by adding Cincinnati, UCF, and, and Houston, along with BYU. Those teams will join that conference next year. The report from Pac-12 country is that USC and UCLA could join the Big 10 as early as the 24 season. All right, so for more on this huge breaking news, let's bring in a couple of our best. Tom Pornelli and Barrett Salee joining us here. Tom, uh, really a Big Ten guy. Barrett, you're an SEC guy. Barrett, I want to start with you. Uh, th this has to be a dr direct reaction from the Big Ten after the SEC got Texas and Oklahoma, is it not? Oh, there's no doubt about it. it when, when the SEC got Texas and Oklahoma, I think the rest of the college football world looked around and said, well, where can we go if we can get to 16? And the Big Ten making a big jump across the country to get to of the more prominent programs in all of college football, not just college football, all of of college sports. So I, I don't think there's any doubt if Texas and Oklahoma had not joined the SEC, then Kevin Warren, the commissioner of the Big, Tw uh, Big Ten, would not be looking across the country for these two programs. But when that domino fell, when Texas and Oklahoma fell, we have saw, just like we saw 10, 12 years ago, the dominoes fall all over the place. And if you're the Big Ten, you need to keep your, keep your foothold as the second best conference, the second most powerful conference in all of college athletics, and they're absolutely going to accomplish that goal. Tom, how big is this for the Big Ten, which went from 10 to 11 and then to 12 and then to 14 and now 16? Oh, well, first of all, it's terrible for the Alliance. I don't know what's going to happen between that with the Pac-12 <laughs> right. and the Big Ten, but <laughs> this is, it's its a huge move. This is, I, I don't think we're done here because realistically, if USC and UCLA are joining the Big Ten, like you said, the closest Big Ten school right now to those two in Los Angeles is Nebraska. I don't know if they want to join the conference thinking that they will be the only two West Coast teams in the conference in the long haul. So I wouldn't be shocked at all to see another couple programs, maybe Oregon or Washington, joining the Big Ten as a follow-up to this. But as far as the Big Ten, like Barrett was saying, I think that this is somewhat of a necessary move considering what the SEC did by going out and getting Texas and Oklahoma. And I think if we go back to, you know, over a decade ago to when the conference realignment really started kicking into gear that saw the Big Ten expand from 10 to 11 to 12 to 14, that saw the SEC expand to 14, Two Super Leagues has kind of been the most likely endpoint for this ever since that happened. And if you look at television deals and things that are going on, the SEC recently signed a very large television deal. The Big Ten is in negotiations right now for a new television deal that will probably see it getting even more money than the SEC just got. And you look at that compared to what the ACC, Big 12, and the Pac-12 have been able to get from their television deals or will be able to get. I think this is just a natural reaction. Big brands like UCLA and USC are going to want to join the Big Ten in order to survive in a college football future that is probably going to look a lot different than the college football past that we've become accustomed to. Okay, so it looks like two super conferences right now. Uh, Barrett, is this it for the Big Twelve for the uh, Pac-12? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt the Pac-12. I mean, look, they, there might be some iteration of it, but we're going into a new era. Uh, we've talked about expanded college football playoffs. That obviously hasn't happened yet, but I think the message across the college athletics world is clear that you neither either need to be a have or a have not, and you need to make that jump as quickly as possible. And right now, the Pac-12, Tom mentioned, if you're Oregon, if you're Washington, you're looking around going, where do we fit in? If you're Arizona and Arizona State, you're wondering, like, hey, look, we're, we're prestigious institutions. Where do we go? So the Pac-12, I think, would still exist. But I think you're looking at more of a fracture of FBS football where you have group of five, you have something else in between that and 
this super football league that right now, like Tom said, there absolutely should be more expansion. I think there will be more expansion because teams like Florida State, teams like Clemson, te uh, all over the country are looking around going, are, how stable are we right now? So yes, I do think the Pac-12, it'll exist, but it will not be a powerful conference anymore because they're going to obviously have to fill these voids and there's really nobody else left to fill them with. Amanda Guerra just uh, slipped me a note that the, the closest game that either one of these teams could play outside of that state against one another, they would have to travel over 1,500 miles to Nebraska to play the Cornhuskers. Of course, you have Maryland and Rutgers all the way on the other coast. Tom, why doesn't geography matter anymore? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, you know, that flights are cheaper now than they used to be a few years ago. And I also think that, honestly, <laughs> like we, we're talking about the money that these schools have been able to get from their television deals. It used to be you didn't want, you know, geography mattered because travel budgets did matter. Travel budgets don't matter anymore. These schools can afford to travel all over the country, or at least the football programs can. What becomes of the Olympic sports who aren't generating nearly as much revenue as football? I'm guessing you, UCLA and USC might have other plans than joining the Big Ten and, and you know, volleyball or any other non-revenue sport. So it'll be interesting to see how that impacts it. But as far as football, their money's no object. We, we've seen that. We've learned that over the last few years. The Big Ten is now going to be from the Atlantic to the Pacific. It doesn't matter anymore. Usually this time of year, you don't have a ton to talk about on the Cover 3 podcast. You always do a good job coming up with interesting stuff. Uh, we just did you a huge favor. Uh, Matt Norlander confirming the news that USC and UCLA are headed to the Big Ten. Check those guys out, Tom Fornelli and Barrett Salee and many more on the Cover 3 podcast, all things college football. But, but again, this is not just college football that's changing. USC, UCLA joining the Big Ten in other sports as well as early as 2024. That's two years away.